Lincoln, Nebraska, the play, says Mr. Jones, hopes to rewrite a script that the Huskers' Matt Davison authored a year ago. This is fourth down. The snap back to Scott Frost. He looks. Why was the pass in the end zone? Incomplete. Touchdown. Yes, he caught the ball for the touchdown. Oh, oh Matt Davis. I'll probably remember that catch for the rest of my life. Hi, I'm Matt Davis. That was a great moment for our team. But truthfully, I hope I don't have to do it again today on the Big 12 Game of the Week. Next. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler present Big 12 football. Today, from another sellout at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, it's 7th ranked Nebraska taking on 19th ranked Missouri. And we take a look at the North standing to the Big 12, Kansas State, Missouri unblemished, Colorado and Nebraska with one loss in conference play. And good afternoon, everybody. Along with Dave Lapham, I'm Drew Goodman. A year ago, it was the game of the year in college football, Missouri and Nebraska. Nebraska came away with a newfound respect for Missouri, and the Tigers came away knowing they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Huskers. Well, they know that, Drew, and they also got another bit of confidence by going up to Ohio State earlier this year on the road, hostile environment, noisy crowd, play the Buckeyes off their feet, authoring a 14-13 halftime lead before ultimately falling, but they generated more confidence for today's tilt in Lincoln. The last couple of years, the big play guy has been Corby Jones from Missouri. He's been terrific again this year, but Devin West has stepped to center stage as well. Tremendously effective, averaging over six yards a carry. He has great vision, deceptive speed because he's a long strider. Not a great cutback guy, but once he decides to go north and south, he is extremely effective. His last 188 carries, he's only been thrown for a loss behind the line of scrimmage three times. So you get him a little, he's going to get you a lot. You bet. That is amazing. He's a number two rusher in the land. Bobby Newcomb a little healthier this week. He might put it up some, but he better look out for Wade Perkins, the cornerback from Missouri, second in the land in interceptions. Nebraska and Missouri, come on back to Lincoln with us. Lincoln, Nebraska, no place like it, down in the midst of the sea of red, our Jim Knox. Knoxie? Okay, thanks a lot, Drew. Yes, Nebraska football fans, some of the best college football fans in the country. 225 consecutive sellouts here in Cornhusker land, and a lot of these Nebraska fans on hand last year in Columbia, Missouri, for the game between Missouri and Nebraska. It was a game in which one of the best that ever took place. On its way to a national championship last year, the Cornhusker dodged a bullet in Columbia. This is fourth down. The snap back to Scott Frost. He looks. Why was a pass in the end zone? Incomplete. Hey. Yes, he caught the ball for the touchdown. Oh, oh, Matt Davis. Chris Brown's kick was good, and the score was tied at 38. In overtime, Nebraska scored in three plays. Scott Frost, fourth rushing touchdown of the day. Then the Cornhuskers held the Tigers in four to preserve the thrilling 45-38 victory. That was the thriller. Will we have another thriller this time in Lincoln, Nebraska today? Well, we will soon see. Up next, Missouri and Nebraska. It's the Dr. Pepper oh, Big 12 yeah. Game of the Week. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful day in Lincoln. Nebraska won the toss. They deferred. They want the wind at their back here in the opening quarter. Chris Brown will kick it off. 31 is Ricardo Rhodes, 4 is Julian Jones. Rhodes had a great week last week returning kicks. Jones, 8 yards deep, wisely puts the knee down. The quarterback is a 3-year starter for Missouri, Corby Jones, 6-1 and close to 225 pounds. You better wrap him up on the option. He breaks tackles left and right. And the offensive line is a very good one. When they need yards, they run right behind Reedy, Heimberger, and Niemeyer. And the skill guys, we talk a lot about Devin West. When they throw it, Kent Lehman has 15 catches.
Jones to throw on first down. He's got a man. It's Lehman to the 36-yard line. A pickup of 16, and we check the defenders. The black shirts for Nebraska. Chad Kelsey has been most consistent this year. That defensive line has withstood some injuries. The linebackers can all run. Jay Foreman, the middle backer, he's been a starter for a couple of years. And Mike Brown, the junior rover, may be the best athlete on a team filled with athletes. Devin West for two or three to the 39-yard line. Dave, we see immediately Corby Jones came out and threw the football. They haven't thrown it well this year, but they feel they need to today. Well, you're going to have to throw the football, mix it up against Nebraska. You're going to have to keep them on their heels, balance yourself up offensively. And I like throwing the football on first down. That's throwing it when you want to instead of when you have to. Big difference. Second down and seven. And whistles blow this one dead. Little movement up front early. It's going to cost Missouri five. You don't want to have that happen. Crowd noise becomes a problem hearing the snap count. Well, they piped a lot of noise into their practices right, this week. All start. Offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Movement up front, the offensive line. A little bit too quick of a start. It's gonna cost Missouri five yards. You don't want to get off, off schedule against Nebraska. You want to you face second and medium, third and short, not second and third and long. And as you saw, they've had trouble with penalties the last couple of weeks. Though a year ago against the Huskers, they were penalized twice for just 10 yards. Jones, Lehman dropped the football. Closing quickly was the free safety, Clint Finley. And now you find yourself in a real tough situation against Nebraska, third and very long. Corby Jones, he's had a turf toe problem, and it affects your throwing. At time the ball just a shade high, but that's very catchable. I mean, Lehman's got sure enough hands. Get two hands on the football, you should be able to secure it. Corby Jones, though, with the turf toe, not only affects your running, but your accuracy as a quarterback starts with your footwork. If you can't transfer your weight and set up, it's tough to throw the football. They need the 46-yard line on third down. Deep ball to Lehman. And it goes incomplete. Good coverage by Irwin Sweeney. So Nebraska holds after an initial first down from Missouri. Well, Missouri tried to go over the top, run a fade route. Lehman and the Missouri receivers today, they will adjust their route depending on this, the technique that Nebraska uses as cornerbacks against them. That time, Sweeney with nice coverage, the ball thrown over Lehman's outside shoulder to the sideline, but just a little bit long and wide. Vince Sebo to punt, one of the keys for Missouri. They better cover Joe Walker in the punt return and kick return game. He's back at his own 30. Loose ball, still loose, and Nebraska will hold on. Shevin Wiggins ended up falling on it. A punt of 35, Ralph Brown is the man who dropped the football. Bobby Newcomb, the sophomore quarterback, all of 19, composed, mature, way beyond his years. A very bright young man. And the pipeline for Nebraska, led by Josh Hescu, the only returning starter from a year ago. And of the skill guys, D'Angelo Evans probably won't go today. Correll Buckhalter, who was over 100 yards last week in a big win over Kansas, is the eye back. They give it to the fullback, Joel Makovica. And a pile of bodies, probably about 18 bodies in there after a one-yard gain. Defensive line for Missouri, an improved defense in all areas. Justin Wyatt has been most consistent up front. The linebackers, led by Barry Odom, a junior. And the secondary, the strength of this defense. Wade Perkins has five picks. The two safeties are very good in Piercy and Easter. In fact, Perkins over the last 10 games has seven interceptions. He's been amazing. 
He finds the ball, doesn't he? Really. Here's a QB draw. Newcomb, nowhere to go. Getting there in a hurry was Marquise Gibson. Number nine, Gibson read that, and it's uh, probably a loss of one on the play. Well, nice job by the Missouri defensive football team. When you have a quarterback with mobility, you still pull the off lineman and let the quarterback run the football. He's as good as a running back but it was defended very well by Missouri. They read the counter, they read both linemen pulling, and made their keys defensively and shut it down. Third down and a long eight. Throw it in the flat, Wiggins will be stopped well short of a first down. Jeff Marriott helped out on the tackle, and Missouri turns away Nebraska three and out. A couple of heavyweight fighters here testing each other out a little bit. Missouri generating a first down on the first play of the game by throwing the football, but both defensive football teams settling down very early in this encounter. This could be a defensive struggle. Billy LaFleur will punt it. He's done a nice job this year. Randy Potter back at his own 15. And with the win, that's a monster boot. Fair catch at the 10-yard line. No score, 11-12 to go in the first. A punt of 51 from the third. Larry Smith on the left in his fifth year now at Missouri. He's completely turned this program around, but that's the M.O. Larry Smith. And Frank Solich, the Nebraska head coach, after 15 years is the running back coach. Handpicked by his predecessor, the great Tom Osborne, and it's still strange to look down there and not see Coach Osborne on the sideline. Oh, it really is, and Larry Smith now has taken four different programs to a bowl game, one of four coaches in the history of college football to do so. Quite an accomplishment. Jones from his own 11-yard line. Devin West with a little opening, and he falls forward to the 18-yard line. A flag did come down. Right. Kaiser was offside. Kaiser jumped in the neutral zone. Defensive lineman for Nebraska a little bit too soon. I think they got him in encroachment. Well, usually the snap counts one, two, or three. That might have been on eight. <laughs> I think there's a lot of dialogue going on at the line of scrimmage. Corby is experienced as he is. A lot of checks, a lot of audibilizations going on. Offside. On the defense. Penalties declined. Second down. The reason it's declined is West got seven yards, and, and that was what you talked about off the top. Devin West moves the pile, and he always falls forward. He really does. I think it's a combination of two great things. The right side of Missouri's offensive line will get him to the line of scrimmage and beyond it, and then West does the rest. You couple those two ingredients of excellence, you got a nice recipe. He's 6-2 and two and a quarter. This is the fullback, Sean Benton. It'll be close to a first down as we check the keys to victory today for the University of Missouri. Well, the first thing wanna, they want to do is win the kicking game. Either win or tie the kicking game. No block kicks, no returns by Nebraska. Play with poison patience. No turnovers, no penalties, no silly plays. An option execution on both sides of the football. They want to be able to run it to stretch the field horizontally against Nebraska, and they also want to be able to defend it when Nebraska does same. It wasn't up for a first down. Out at the 22-yard line. Jones throwing, and it is complete. Close to another first down. It's John Dousman, just his fifth catch of the year. The sophomore from Knob Noster, Missouri. A little crossing pattern going on from Missouri. It starts up front. The protection by the offensive line and the running backs on the perimeter is exceptional for Corby. His vision totally unimpeded. Little crossing run underneath. Positive yards. That's the key. Throwing the ball well on the early downs. Don't wait until your third and must situations to throw the ball. Throw it when you want to. Another first down out close to the 33. Option look, Jones brought down almost immediately. 37, Tony Ortiz. Let's take a look at what Nebraska has to do to win this football game. 
First thing is they enjoy field position. Their average start point is the 35-yard line, the opposition 25-yard line. That's a first down in their favor, and the opposition has to make up. Last year, they gave up 15, 12 plays of 15 yards or more to Missouri. Can't do that. And obviously, don't turn the football over. That'll kill you in a big matchup like this. Second and nine. Again, the option. And Jones lost the football. Nebraska has it. Lauren Kaiser's on the football. Well, we talked about turnovers being a big key, and Nebraska comes up with the first takeaway of the game. Well, a year ago, when Nebraska held on in overtime to beat Missouri, Missouri was plus two in turnover margin in that football game. Well, look at this. Not only a takeaway, but 36-yard field to negotiate. A short field for Nebraska. That plays into their turnover and field position keys to this game. Buck Halter and McAvick in the eye. Dukem late pitch and Buckhalter steps out of bounds. Will actually lose two yards. Let's take another look at that Corby Jones fumble. Well, a big key is ball security in a football game like this. Corby Jones running the option down the line of scrimmage. And the ball, he's hit from behind and stripped from behind. And I think a, a, a hit from the frontal position as well. Kaiser comes up with the football, but Corby Jones sandwiched. I think somebody grabbed his arms and another put the helmet right on the football. A nice double team tackle by Nebraska and Corby popped it up. Newcomb throws it in the flat. Buckholder's got room. Close to a first down for the Huskers. Gibson brought him down. Good safe throw to get Bobby Newcomb on track. Yeah, it really is. It's like a long lateral. This is almost as safe as the running game. And down the football field, Sheldon Jackson threw a great block as a tight end to give Buckhalter an opportunity to generate the first down. And that's something that Frank Solich was talking about yesterday. The wide receivers have not been dominant as blockers on the perimeter like he expects. And they're going to have to pick it up in that area. And Jackson did a nice job as a tight end. Bobby Newcomb changing the play to the option. Good idea. He got nine to the 15-yard line. Newcomb run out of bounds on the play, but it was by Carlos Posey. Run out by Carlos Posey. Bobby Newcomb is a special player. Very, very bright, not only on the football field, but in the classroom. He may be the fastest guy ever to play quarterback at Nebraska. Well, that's what, that's what the coaching staff thinks. And once again, a, a key for Bobby Newcomb on this play. Take a look at Lance Brown working against Harold Piercy. Lance Brown right here down the football field on Piercy. That's what we're talking about with wide receivers blocking the defensive backs on the perimeter for extra yards. Buck Halter. He'll have a first down to the 11-yard line. Tackled by the strong safety, Caldron off Easter. Well, you can see how turnovers can be damaging. You know, sure handling of the football is imperative in major matchups like this one. Because now Nebraska, at worst-case scenario, they're in Chris Brown field goal range. And you see how effective they are in the red zone. They are firmly in the red zone now. 89% scoring percentage and 25 touchdowns is pretty ex exceptional. I'd say that's pretty efficient. I'd say that's getting it done. 27 touchdowns, I should say, of 37 times. And on the flip side of it, Missouri's been very good in the red zone themselves. They've only allowed four touchdowns in 18 opposition journeys into the red zone. So that's pretty effective. Let's see how this one shakes down. Vicka lowers his pads and gets maybe to the six. He's a load, 5'11 and 240. Another very good fullback in a long line of great fullbacks here in Big Red Country. Well, Makovica did a nice job of slamming on the brakes there. And that's a pretty big body to slam the brakes on and get north and south again. 5'11, 240 pounds. A true fullback build right there. You gotta love everything about Makovica. He understands what everybody's supposed to do offensively. He'll block, he'll catch, and he'll run. Second and five. Nebraska can get a first down without scoring. Newcomb blown up. Coming hard was Gibson. 
Marquis Gibson slashed in there and dropped Newcomb in a hurry. Well, sometimes you blitz and stunt to stop the run. And that's exactly what Missouri did here. A heat-seeking missile off the edge. And Gibson finds his target and detonates. That's a big-time play right there. Tackle for loss. Third and a good bunch here in the red zone. And here's one of our first big plays of the game. Third and five. Away, short of, he threw it backwards, and he's going to get flagged. Intentional grounding. Plus, in worst best case scenario, he loses that yardage. He threw it backwards out of bounds, and he threw the intentionally grounded the ball to avoid a sack. That's a loss of down yards. That's a great defensive stand from Missouri right there. You can't throw the football away to avoid the sack, and he was well within the grasp right there. Bobby Newcomb ended up throwing a backward pass. That was a lateral. I think the closest person to it was Frank Solich. Really? Jim Knox might have might have been able to make a catch. I think Jim was fair catching over there, our sideline guy. Well, see, the difference is Frank would have caught it. Knox Intentional grounding. might have dropped it. On the offense. Also lost a down. Fourth down. That's a great defensive stand by Missouri right there. Little play action pass. I like the call giving Newcomb a two-way go on the perimeter. But he's got nowhere to go and just throws the football away. Nice defensive effort right there by Odom. Barry Odom does a fantastic job of keeping contain on Newcomb and causing the penalty. Now it makes it a little more difficult field goal. 38 yards away, Chris Brown, who's excellent, pokes it through. And Nebraska takes advantage of the Corby Jones turnover. They're on the board first, three to nothing. Left getting set. Missouri trails Bobby Newcomb's Nebraska Cornhuskers three to nothing. Newcomb drove him down inside the 10 yard line and then was sacked by Barry Odom. Chris Brown kicked a 38 yard field goal and now he'll kick it deep to either Julian Jones or Ricardo Rhodes. Well, the defensive football team helped his court, their quarterback out a little bit. Corby Jones turning the football over. The defense pulling their necks and allowing only a field goal opportunity, defending the short field. I think that's a plus for Missouri's defense. But Gibson with the big play. Rhodes to return it one yard deep. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Major league collision. Ortiz absolutely detonated it. Greg that's McGraw cool. also in there. Woo. Raw was the was the uh, was the guy that came in and made the the helmet to helmet shot. And that's the man. Boy, that is a that's a ripper right there, big time. That'll earn you a job on the suicide team. Eight plays, 15 yards. Our scoring drive brought to you by Buick. After the turnover, Nebraska kicks a field goal. Devin West, two hands on the football, crosses the 15, gets to the 17-yard line. Well, Devin West, over 1,000 yards rushing this year, and we asked Frank Solich about Devin West and what he thought of the senior from Missouri. The average back uh, that gets maybe three, four yards on a carry, Devin gets about eight to 10 yards uh, on a carry, so he's certainly an outstanding running back. That's pretty good if uh, you can get five more than everybody else. That means you got to gang up on him. You can't leave your buddy out there, Gilligan, without Marion and the professor. You're going to get bodies around him. Jones wants a deep shot. And he overthrows John Dousman. Let him a little bit much. And Dousman had a step on the corner route. And let's check in now with Jim Knox. Jim, what do you have? Okay, Drew, I talked to Corby Jones, Missouri quarterback, before the game. He told me the toe is fine. In fact, he says he's close to 100%. I got to show you the shoes he's wearing today, though. These are running shoes. They're Air Maxes, a softer cushion, and a bigger toe. And that can only be a comfortable fit for Toby's, Corby's toe. But you know what? The last few weeks, he's worn a bigger shoe on his left foot because of swelling and padding. Right. Third down and seven for the Tigers. And Kelsey 
ran across the line of scrimmage. Either he was drawn off or you know, he it'll thought be offsides he, on Nebraska. Yeah, he thought he saw some movement. He ran across the line of scrimmage applauding himself. Hopefully there was some movement that uh, made him jump. Prior to the snap, full start, offense, five-yard penalty, two third down. You know, you talk about field position as a big key for Nebraska in this football game. Corby Jones' fumble gave the field position to Nebraska. They score a field goal. Then the kickoff coverage team pins Missouri's good kickoff return team back inside the 20. Now you have a five-yard penalty. All of a sudden, the field position really starting to work its way towards Nebraska's favor, and that's exactly what they wanted to have happen early in this game. Those hidden yards we always talk about. Absolutely. Three receivers are trips to the top on third and 11. Jones in trouble, big trouble. Dropped at the nine yard line. And the field position gets worse. Kelsey and Kaiser in there. Foreman applying pressure. And a, and a hit like that will, will hurt Corby Jones and he's got a hitch in his get along as he comes to the sideline. You know, turf toe is not a fun thing. It ended Jack Lambert's career. And here's Corby Jones in the shotgun. The pressure comes up the middle, all out blitz. Kelsey is one of the one of the initials that, uh, that that caused problems to bring him down, but Eric Johnson caught, caused the initial pressure that made Corby Jones vacate the pocket out of the shotgun. Great rush all around by Nebraska. Sebo to punt. Nebraska should get great field position. Walker back at his own 45, and they punted away from Walker again. Ralph Brown couldn't field it, and this one will take a Missouri bounce. Boy, that's, he came, exa that's exactly what they needed. He came close to touching that thing, too, but obviously he didn't, because he didn't cover the football. If he touched it, would have been real trouble. This quarter with Dave Lapham and Jim Knox. I'm Drew Goodman. The Huskers, 3 to nothing over the Missouri Tigers. And a new quarterback, Monte Cristo. Now, for you Bobby Newcomb fans, don't be alarmed. This is by design. They wanted to get Christo some snaps. He's played well this year. Throwing the ball, he's 14 of 18. The count. The count is in the game. You got it. And the count is running the option. Got two blockers. And he'll get about four or five yards to the 37-yard line. Monte Cristo is a senior from Kearney. He's rushed the ball pretty well. He's a bright guy. He always puts them in the right formation and is effective in the option game. That 78% passing completion mark is outstanding. Plus, like you say, Drew, great decision maker in the option. He's got great pitch technique, and he pitches the ball late at the last possible second for extra yards. Makovica breaking tackles. And he'll be close to a first down. Boy, you got to love a guy like Makovica. I, he's an honorary hog, in my opinion. He, he makes the honorary offensive line because of his blocking abilities, but he's a little bit more skilled and gifted because he can run the football and he can catch it. He loves contact. He's a north-south runner, to say the very least. He's, he's got the school record for rushing touchdowns as a fullback with 13. And he loses yards about once a season. They need one on third down. Christo takes it himself and got more than enough for the chains to move. Good surge in the middle of the offensive line. Right behind the most experienced and effective offensive lineman, Heskew. Right up the gut. And then, as we talk about this offensive line, Heskew is, is the man right here with 22 career starts. Everybody else, look at that, eight across the board. I mean, that's this year's activity as starting lineman. When's the last time Nebraska broke in four horses in the same year? Generally, it doesn't happen. And this one will be stopped on first and 10 from the 44-yard line. Flags flew. Illegal procedure. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Everybody trying to get that jump the gun a little bit, trying to get off the line of scrimmage. You know, I think both of these football teams run the ball effectively between the tackles. In my opinion, this game is ultimately going to come down to who runs and defends the option the best and who can throw and catch the football the best today. First and 15. 
Christo on a delay. Puck called to him. He got about 15. He's one of those guys you do not want to see his pad square to the line of scrimmage if you're a Missouri fan. Absolutely. And it starts up front, Drew. And watch the block of the left guard here, Sherman, as he takes it up the football field as a lead block. A little fold block, and he's going to get his trap. And boy, there's a tremendous surge up the field. Sherman is escorting him. And Buck Halter just takes it. I mean, he doesn't get touched till he's five yards past the line of scrimmage. And there is D'Angelo Evans on the sideline. He did dress today, but it is unlikely that he'll play. The up back, Magavica, draws a crowd. Led by 90, Justin Wyatt. It'll be second down and about nine and a half yards. D'Angelo Evans has had trouble throughout his career staying healthy, but it's kind of nice bonus day when he gives the ball to a Buckhalter. I'll tell you, Buckhalter exceptionally effective, averaging 6.3 yards per carry. That'll flat out get it done. That's efficiency right there. Nebraska never short on eye backs. Christo keeps it. And he's dropped after about three or four yards. Barry Odom brought him down, and it will set up third down from the Missouri 41-yard line. You know, the count has got the respect of this football team. You can count on Monte Cristo. I mean, that seems to be the motto. The defensive players respect the fact that he's come in and given this football team a lift under adverse conditions with Bobby Newton got hurt. He's performed exceptionally well. He's been injured himself, but he keeps sawing wood, and now he's performing at a high level. Third down and six. And this won't go anywhere. For a moment, it looked like Crystal wanted to throw it, Dave. It did, but Odom made a quick defensive read, and Odom basically disrupted everything. Once again, Barry Odom had the quarterback sack on Newcomb. 39 in the white jersey, watching down the bottom of the screen. He appears and he makes Christo cut it up the field early. And it, it took away any option, any other play that he had in mind. McEvick couldn't pick him up. I can see why the coaching staff from Missouri feels that Odom has been, on a snap-by-snap -snap basis, their most consistent defensive performer. So Missouri forces Nebraska to punt LaFleur with Potter back at his own 10. Takes one of those high hops. Nebraska will deaden it at the two-yard line. The man who snapped it, Dominic Riola, got downfield and covered it. Not bad for the big 300-pounder from Honolulu. I'm telling you, he showed some athletic ability there. A little change of direction. He even had a little vertical in celebration. My vertical, you can't get the Sunday newspaper under. He got some inches there. Yeah, more than a credit card. Absolutely. Big 12 fans, how'd you like to win a trip to the Big 12 Champions Bowl game? It's easy. Just answer the Nation's Bank salute to excellence question this week. Who's the all-time career leader in total yardage for Nebraska? If you know the answer, visit the Nation's Bank website at nationsbank.com slash sports. Well, we talked about field position being a key for Nebraska. Look at this field position Missouri starts with. Give it to the fullback, and Sean Benton gets a couple of yards, and the story of this first quarter has been field position, but Nebraska really hasn't capitalized. That's exactly right. Missouri has had a long football field almost every possession. Nebraska has had a short field to negotiate for the more, most part and haven't been able to get it done. In Nebraska, Missouri's got the win against them in this quarter in bad field position, They're only down three points. West, nowhere to go. Ran into Kelsey and Cope. Now this is a this is a situation. Does Missouri risk throwing the football? Look at the starting field position here. This, this is going into this football game. This isn't counting today. But Nebraska has started every possession on their own 36. The opposition their own 25. It's worse than that today. But they've enjoyed at least a 10-yard advantage coming into today's action in possession starting point. Third and eight for Missouri. They go conservative. 
And Devin West busts it through for a first down. That is a huge play for Missouri on the final snap of the first quarter. They won't have to punt it from their own end zone when we come back to Lincoln. Bet you that gentleman seen a few Nebraska games here at Memorial Stadium. His Huskers leading three to nothing. Missouri with a first and ten from their own 16-yard line. West straight ahead, moving bodies as he goes close to the 20-yard line. Well, this is the exact same play that they ran on the last play of the first quarter. Watch the offensive lineman get it started here, then watch the fullback and tight end work on the edge and sort out the blocks. And Benton gets his block at the linebacker level and down the football field, a nice effort by Dosman, giving West an opportunity to generate the first down. Nothing fancy, just a fullback lead, a little iso off the left side of the offensive line. And West averaging better than five yards a carry in the early going. He got four on that prior play. Jones to run the option. And Polk grabbed him after a short game. Carlos Polk, the sophomore from Rockford, Illinois. Let's take a look at the numbers from the first quarter. Look at this number. 30-yard differential in Nebraska's favor. Average drive start. That and this. These two right here, field position and turnovers, the story of this football game. Both defensive football teams playing well. And you know it's a little different. A year ago, you talked about these two squads' offenses. Not that they're bad this year, but the defenses have dominated thus far. Right. Third down for Missouri. They need the 32. Jones. That'll be well short, and he's fortunate it wasn't picked off. <laughs> That's what my reaction was. I thought he was going the other way with the football. Ralph Brown was closing in a hurry. Dawsman made the catch, but Nebraska holds. Corby Jones showing arm strength here because I thought Brown was going to pick it and see some golden goal posts. Offensive line, nice protection. Nobody giving Corby any vision problems. Corby's got a nice little gun, though. He gets it there in a very, very timely fashion. What's, what's with Sebo with the with the barefoot stuff? Man, when it gets chilly, it's going to be tough on the toenails, doesn't it? Uh, I've never understood that, Dave. <laughs> Place kickers, punters doing it barefoot. Oh, got it. it partially blocked. Nebraska got a hand on it, and Walker's going to field it. Ortiz got the block, and he hit the punter. The, the referee doesn't realize he deflected the ball. He's calling, running into the punter, roughing the kicker. The ball was deflected. He's going to be told right now that that's not a penalty. Pick that flag up. He got a piece of the football. That's no penalty. That's the, that's a, that's a clean play because Ortiz did deflect it. He's going to go pick it up, but I think he's on his way right now. Steve Uzcheck conferred with the rest of his crew. Disregard the foul. The ball is kicked. That's right. Once Ortiz touches the football, the kicker is fair game. Ortiz gets the deflection. This is what Missouri didn't want to have happen. No block kicks, no deflected kicks, no return kicks. Ortiz gets the big right hand up there and deflects it. Sebo trying to short leg the extension there a little bit so he didn't get hurt. The official saw that contact, but it's allowable because Ortiz did tip the ball. Sebo is a solid punter. One problem with Vince is he's a little slow getting it off. Look at here, Drew, 38-yard line. The field position advantage continues for Nebraska. Bristow on the option. Still going. Oh! You better get the band to help out and tackle him. All the way to the 47 of Missouri. The count is on his mount. Boy, he's running a lot bigger than his body dictates, that's for sure. Once he turns the corner, watch after contact is made. Watch him keep his legs pumping, his legs driving. That's nice yards after contact. Look at him, just driving those feet, pumping those knees. There's no quit in the count, I'll tell you that right now. 15 yards on the pickup. Yeah. 
this time they defend it well. They string it out. And it'll be no gain on the play. Al Sterling, 48, was involved. The 246-pound senior from Mesa, Arizona. Boy, the upgrade of the Missouri defensive football team from the last couple of years that we've seen is remarkable. They're bigger, faster, stronger. I mean, you take a physical category and there's improvement. Larry Smith has done one heck of a job as, as well as the rest of his coaching staff recruiting an upgrade caliber athlete on this side of the football. Chris Dota on the option the other way. Ball on the ground. It's loose. Uh oh This could go the other way. Erickson will score. That is a touchdown, folks. On the play. Steve Erickson. Turnover. Huge. The count tried to pitch it late and pitched it behind his running back. A 41-yard fumble returned by the junior from Dallas. And he's glad to make that 40-yard sprint. Linemen hate to run long distances, but that was a that was a little journey of joy right there for Steve Erickson. You know what? He always finds a way against Nebraska. Last year he had nine tackles and a fumble recovery. Now this, the extra points have been an adventure for Missouri this year, and they continue to be. Boy, the extra point was missed. And it's six to three. Right now on the left, Steve Erickson. Monte Cristo's pitch was behind Carell Buckhalter. Erickson picked it up and ran 41 yards for a touchdown. Missouri missed the extra point. They're now just 21 of 27 this year in PATs. That's uh, that's incredible. I know in the National Football League, the conversion rate of extra points is 99 and a half percent. And uh, I know Missouri would love to have that type of success on an extra point conversion because Every one of them has been a thrill a minute. J.R. Romine did not miss the extra point. He's kicking off. Brian Long, a walk-on who's not even listed on the depth chart and the travel roster, missed the extra point, his first career attempt. Shevin Wiggins on the short kick. And he ran through a tackle. to the 46-yard line, and once again, Nebraska has great field position. Well, the Nebraska coaching staff thought that Missouri was having a tough time covering kicks. They said Missouri's kickoff return team has been good. Their kickoff coverage team has been suspect. And Missouri has more defensive starters on the kicking teams this week and will probably continue down the stretch of their season to upgrade the talent level there. So far, though, Nebraska is handling Missouri in the kicking game phase. Larry Smith is going to open tryouts for kickers again this week. He's already done it once this year. Buckhalter on the pitch. And Buckhalter got about six or seven. Terrell Jereniak stopped his progress. Well, let's take a look at the pitch by Christo. It, Buckhalter tries to one-hand it. The ball is pitched behind him. It's not an accurate enough pitch by Christo, which is uncharacteristic. And then, of course, Erickson. He didn't have to worry about sprinter speed because everybody's going the other way. There's nobody that can even get in pursuit of the big fella. He's seeing golden goalposts immediately. How about the big man? Is that the textbook way to carry the football? <laughs> he was in a celebration mode early, wasn't he? That looked like his uh, eighth grade lunchbox he was low, carrying. A little low for bread, though. Yeah. <laughs> Second and three. Buckhalter will have probably enough for a first down. Harold Piercy stuck his nose in there and made a... Solid tackle, bringing Buckholder down out of bounds, or he stayed on his feet, but he knocked him out of bounds. Pierce, he goes 202 pounds. Yeah, he's a he's a corner that can uh, that can really run, as well as the, the speed that he's got. I mean, he can uh, say he can really get after it pretty pretty well. You're talking about the NFL. The NFL loves guys at safeties now that at safety that look like linebackers. No question. It was enough. First down at the 43 of Missouri. Nebraska trailing 6-3. Bobby Newcomb. And that's Bobby's best run of the day. He got six yards. 
You know, it's a shame that Bobby Newcomb and Corby Jones, neither one 100% physically for this matchup. Newcomb with the, with the tear in the posterior cruciate ligament, it's got an end point to that tear. It's not completely torn, but as a result of that tear, he gets swelling and stiffness in that, in that knee. You can see the joint, the uh, apparatus that's on that left knee. It's wearing that brace, that Lennox Hill brace, and neither quarterback able to accelerate like they have in the past. Two tight ends, Nebraska second and four. Buckhalter to the 29-yard line. Dave, they're starting to do some business between the tackles. Well, they are. I think both football teams, Drew, would be able to do that, smash in the mouth between the tackles. I still believe the team that runs and defends the option the best and throws the football best will win this game. A little bit of a counter, nice trap by the lineman, counter step by Buckhalter to time it up. And then it's north and south, lower your shoulder pads and get everything you can. First and 10, Buckhalter. And this time Missouri does a pretty good job. Justin Wyatt, the senior defensive end, grabbed him and dropped him in a hurry. Missouri's defensive football team starting to stay on the field too much here. Nebraska's time of possession and number of snaps is starting to roll up in their favor. Field position already in their favor, big time. The kicking game has been a problem for Missouri so far this year, and it's surfacing as a problem in this encounter. Second and seven. Davison and Lance Brown. Wide to the near side. Newcomb on the option. Cuts it back and falls ahead to about the 21, setting up a very manageable third down. Third and a couple. Here's Nebraska rushing the football this year. You look at the Oklahoma State game and the A&M game, that's not Nebraska-like numbers. Now, of course, they bounced back against Kansas with 466 yards. They said they wanted to get back to that smash mouth stuff. They ran it well against Washington as well. Hammered them for 434 yards on 68 carries. But it's been inconsistent because of injury at the quarterback and tailback position. We just saw D'Angelo Evans. He's been nicked up. And a relatively new offensive line. Third and a long two. Buckholder doesn't get there. Joel McAvicka couldn't even get to the line of scrimmage to make a block. Missouri. Did a good job there and a decision for Frank Solich. And Solich at least has the decision available to him. If this were Larry Smith, he'd be going for it, no question. But Solich has got Chris Brown. And because of the missed extra point, this field goal would tie it up. Missouri could still have a 7-6 lead. Frank Solich decided to go with his career kicker. I mean, this guy has got six single season records and six more career records. At least Frank Solich does have an option, a choice to make. This will be a 38-yarder, pretty much straight on. Blocked. And it's blocked. Missouri has blocked it. They get the ball to Piercy. Piercy's got one to beat. He runs out of bounds at the 25-yard line. That is just like a turnover. Well, Perkins came up with the blocked field goal, and he lateraled it back to Piercy. And then Piercy was off to the races, but enough, enough speed by Legate to track it down. I think Erickson, the big fella, is the one that got his hand, or Marriott, Jeff Marriott, got his hand on the field goal to block it. Chris Brown, yeah, it's Marriott, right up the middle. He absolutely creases the middle of the protection. There's the ball being recovered right there by Perkins, and he pitches back to his teammate, Piercy. Legate's got an angle, and Piercy looks like he's got a definite hitch in his get along. First and 10, Missouri at the plus 25-yard line. Jones on a sprint out. End zone shot. Oh. Ralph Brown got turned around just in time. Dawsman was open. The ball was a little underthrown, quite honestly. Well, you call this snake eyes. That was our terminology. When you have a big play, either a turnover or a block kick, you go for the juggler. And that's exactly what Larry Smith decides to do. Go downtown, try to put points on the board immediately. This would have been a 10-point swing if the completion could have been executed. But good coverage. Dawson can't make the play. Brown's there for good coverage. Dwayne Blakely, the tight end, running down the hash marks, was wide open. Here 
Here's Devin West to the 20 yard line. You know, under Larry Smith, in five years, really four and a half years, Missouri has blocked 19 punts or placements. That's getting it done. Well, that really is an, a, another a statistic. They've now got nine defensive touchdowns under Larry Smith. And that defensive touchdown today by Erickson was the ninth one. And they're five, one, and one coming into today when the defense scores. Third down and a long five. Brian Long is practicing on the sideline. And now Corby Jones wants to visit that sideline and confer with the sure, offensive yeah. staff. 8.08 to go before halftime. Marriott blocked the field goal attempt by Chris Brown. Piercy returned it to the 30. It's now third down and five for Missouri. They need the Nebraska 15. Jones on a roll, complete first down. Good throw, good catch by Dawsman. Well, we showed you Marriott, and he's got some nice hotels, too. They've been very comfortable over the years to, to stay there. But Marriott, watch right up the middle here. Watch where he comes from. He separates the protection. You have to step down inside if you're Nebraska. Marriott creases it, pierces it, and blocks it cleanly with his left arm. And then it's off to the races. You have to seal inside as a, punt, as a field goal block unit. Nebraska did not do that. They gave up the gap. Devin West. Got to the 11-yard line. 21 reacting up Mike Brown, the rover. You know, one thing that Missouri's doing very well with Corby Jones is in and out of the pocket throwing the football. It's almost been a 50-50 mix, giving Nebraska a different aiming point to get after the quarterback. The quarterback launching the football in the pocket and out of the pocket equally well, 50-50. And that's very tough for a defensive football team to adjust to because Corby's got that great mobility. And his toe does look better than it's looked the last couple of weeks. And if, if he continues to play like this, it'll be a big spark. Second and eight. Jones to the five-yard line, about two yards shy of a first down. Well, Nebraska Got has injury. one of the great streaks going. We'll pick up that injury uh, in a moment. There is a player down. 46 in a row here at Memorial Stadium. The last team to come in here and win was the University of Washington. And the reason I mention that is that that year, Washington won the national championship. Over the last 11 years, Nebraska has lost two games here in Lincoln. The other team to beat them, Colorado, Colorado when Absolutely. they won a national championship. They shared that national championship. We've got a Nebraska football player down, Tony Ortiz. He of punt deflection fame earlier in this football game. Tony Ortiz uh, looks like he's got a problem in the midsection area. He keeps pointing down to his hip or abdomen. Yeah, Tony's come a long way to play his college football. He was the defensive player of the year nationally coming out of high school. He's from New York City. New York, New York. That's like that Bacani Big sauce apple. ad. <laughs> Kid from New York in Lincoln, Nebraska. Huh? That's, that That's right. Looks like he's going to be fine. He'll, uh, he may have had the wind knocked out of him as much as anything. In a game of this magnitude, he'll be back to dance again. He's already dancing off the field under his own power. Love to see that. Frank Solich's team right now needs to bow their neck a little bit. Third and two for Missouri at the five-yard line. Missouri leads six to three. Six forty-five to go in the second. No surprise, Devin West, and he should have enough for the first down. Dave, what does the crowd noise do to an offense? Uh, it, it's it, the only advantage you have, Drew, is the snap count. And I thought the Lincoln crowd might get a little bit louder because they wanted a very long snap count trying to draw, draw Nebraska offside. But they maintained their poise for the minus scrimmage. They held their water, and it was third and one.
one, third and two. In that situation, Missouri has converted 23 out of 24 times, making 24 out of 25. It gives them a first and goal, and nothing fancy. Just leading up inside with the fullback, you give it to Big West, and he's not going to go east and west, he's going north and south. And they'll go out of the power eye on first and goal. Reset, Kelsey came across the line of scrimmage and pointed at Todd Niemeyer. We'll see who moved. Well, the backs moved laterally, which they can do in reset. And that's what Kelsey was looking at. Nobody moved up front. He had his eyes in the back. Third field. snap. Offside. On a defense. Well, Niemeyer, or Kelsey says Niemeyer moved, or somebody on the right side moved. Let's take a look at the right side of the offensive line. Niemeyer flinches. You saw him roll his body forward a little bit. Kelsey's right. He saw movement. The officials missed it. Niemeyer got away with one, and, and the backs were moving at the same time. You can't have multiple people in motion like that and get the big lineman rolling off the line of scrimmage, rolling out of his stance a little. Weston Benton are the fullbacks. Devin West of football. He didn't get in. Football, you they say the football is loose. And the officials are saying it's down. You know what? That is almost impossible, Dave, for the men in striped shirts to see. Well, it's a tug of war then, Drew, and the strongest hands and strongest wrists and strongest forearms come up with the football. But in, in their estimation, the West forward progress was stopped and the whistle blew. Take a look at the surge up front, a power eye formation, two lead blockers for West. Ball did the come ball, out. The ball came out of there as he goes over the top, a helmet right on the football by Foreman. And he missed, they, they missed the play. They totally missed the play. Foreman knocked it clean. That's two straight misses by the Zebras. Great look at it. No question. He fumbled. West did not get in that time either. It'll be third and goal. Boy, Foreman came over the top and put his helmet right on the football. How can the, how can the umpire miss that call? But a nice goal line stand going on for Nebraska right here. Once again, a little power formation. And met right right over the top. The, the shoulder pads put right on the football by Eric Johnson. These linebackers are very active, but it starts up front. The defensive linemen have to neutralize the charge, and then the linebackers can get up over the top. And Nebraska calls a timeout. They had too many men on the field. They were running off the field. One more guy, they would have been flagged. They had to call the timeout. They had 12 on the field. Six to three, Missouri. They have third and goal from inside the one yard line. But here was the play on first down, Dave. And Foreman comes over the top, puts his shoulder pads right on the football, knocks it clean. The umpire's looking right at it. He missed that call. He must have been blind. West. Oh, he didn't get there. Okay. He might have lost a foot. And on fourth down with a shaky field goal unit, I imagine they'll go. They, they may go. And what they might do is fake that in a little naked bootleg by Corby Jones, give him a run pass option. Nebraska, or Missouri has been nine times inside the five-yard line. They've scored nine times. They're nine for nine, but they haven't played a defense like Nebraska. First and goal at the five-yard line or inside. They have not missed yet this year. They're going for it again out of the power eye. Nebraska's defensive line is stacking it up. Here's the option. Jones, touchdown. Well, they didn't quite do what I thought. And fake it and make it boot like it's similar. Run the option to the wide side of the field. Give Corby Jones a two-way go. Let him keep it or pitch it. Because it wasn't working between the tackles. Let your other athlete get it done on the edge. And Marriott, Jeff Marriott, set the whole thing up with his uh, locked field goal up the chute. And they will go for one, not two. Brian Long will again attempt the extra point. Over the last two weeks, Missouri 0 for 3 in PATs. Alexander St. Peter did not make the trip at two block last week. He was kicking him in his lineman's butt. This one, a better job. So long kicker this year used by Larry Smith makes it 13 to three. And now Missouri is 10 for 10. 
when they have the ball inside the five yard line, just powering it in, just smash, smash mouth football, which Larry Smith loves. But his power eye formation wasn't working. You see the two lead blockers in front. So he says, I'm going to go to my next, my other option, my other athlete. I have West up the gut or Jones on the perimeter. I'm going to take Jones on the perimeter. West up the gut didn't work. I'm going to take Corby and let him make his decision. His decision is good enough for me. He's a senior. He'll make the right call, and he did. He kept it and pierced the goal line for a touchdown. Big play. You know, Dave, you made a great point about Larry Smith. Larry Smith's a Nebraska kind of guy. He wants to hit it up in there. If it was up to him, he probably wouldn't throw it at all. Absolutely. Uh, if it were up to him, I think everybody put gloves on, and they just box at the emblem in the middle of the field. <laughs> I mean, he loves the physical part of football. I mean, he just likes to get in your face and smash mouth you a little bit. To him, the game's simple. You block and you tackle. And uh, the guy, the team that does it the best wins football games. Corby Jones talking upstairs. His club leading 13 to three with 3.52 to go before halftime. <laughs> Nebraska held to a field goal thus far despite wonderful field position. This is a better effort, and Shevin Wiggins, five yards deep, will put the knee down. Missouri has made a number of big plays today defensively and really caused a turnover on special teams as well. well let's look at the goal line stand. Foreman's fumble, cost fumble is missed. Then they stuff West out of the power eye. Stuff West again out of the power eye. Three straight shots inside, so what do you do? You go to the edge. Let Corby Jones turn it up inside for a touchdown in the option. That was the goal line sequence that led to the touchdown for the Tigers. Bobby Newcomb, the quarterback, Buck Halter. Hounds it up in there for about three or four yards. Buck Halter's physical, six foot, 225 pounds, as we look at our Buick scoring drive. Marriott had the blocked field goal, and Missouri only had to traverse 25 yards, but it took them 10 plays to do it. And, and I'll tell you what, Larry Smith, in hindsight, likes that. Almost six, five minutes off the clock to only negotiate 25 yards, so he's shortening the game as well as putting points on the board. Newcomb on a sprint out will keep it. And a pretty athletic move. He dove around Jamonte Robinson close to the sticks. It, it, it's sad to watch. Not sad, but it, it's uh, you wish that these two quarterbacks were 100% healthy, like I said before, because it's like a thoroughbred that's not able to run at full bore. Corby Jones has got the... He's not, he's, not, he's not a Clydesdale, he's not a thoroughbred, he's somewhere in between. He's got the speed and the size. Newcomb is a thoroughbred. He has to be 100% physically able to do his job. And he's not 100%. Third and two. And Newcomb did enough there to get the first down. Bobby Newcomb practices sparingly during the week. Talked about how bright he is. Last year, Dave, check this out. In his freshman year, he passed 45 credit hours and has a 3-2 in the classroom. That's incredible. 15 hours per semester during the year and then 15 more in summer school. This kid is a disciplined young man. He has time management down to the nth degree. Just 19. First and 10 for Nebraska. Newcomb with time breaking down, and he will be sacked for a six-yard loss. Second sack for Missouri today. That's a coverage sack. That's a coverage sack, and it's a mistake by the quarterback. Throw it away. I know you're completing well over 60% of your passes, but there's no opportunity to get anything done here, and your offensive line gave you good enough protection. There's nowhere to deliver the football. Now you try to make something happen, get out of pocket. You still know where to go with it. Right there, throw it away. Don't, don't just take the football down to take that sack from Julian Jones. Get rid of it and now line up second and 10 instead of second and 17. Inside two minutes to play in the first half. Newcomb and his intended target wasn't even looking. Shevin Wiggins was still running his route. They weren't only on different pages of the book, they were on different volumes of the encyclopedia. Wasn't even close. Wiggins. 
was he was taking the his route down the football field and Newcomb threw it underneath. Missouri has rattled the Nebraska offense. They have. They, they really have. Defensively, they've uh, they've held up. They've had tough field position and more than held their own. Third and 16. Nebraska needs the 42. Screen as flags comes in. Comes in. Come in and uh, Buckhalter stop two yards shy of a first down, but hold everything. Justin Wyatt was early. Justin Wyatt came off the line of scrimmage before the snap of the football as a defensive end. He was in the neutral zone. This is going to be uh, another opportunity for Nebraska here if they so choose to take this five yard penalty. Now they'll have third and 11 instead of third and 16. Nebraska trying to decide right now, talking it over on the sideline. They're going to take it or not here. Everybody's waiting with bated breath for the final decision. I don't see how you can't not take it. I guess I guess you think you're going to go for it on fourth down, fourth and short at the 40 yard line, but I'd, I'd take the penalty and give, give another third down. Outside. On a defense, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. Hey, Dave, one of the veteran coaches for Nebraska, and they all seem to be veterans of many seasons, is Ron Brown. And Ron Brown, he's a funny guy. He's all sorts of great quips. And one of his quips is, a bird flies, a lizard crawls, and Nebraska runs the football. <laughs> Some things never change. Huh? That's right. And, and that's the wide receiver coach saying that. And his wide receivers, they're involved in those pancake blocks, blocks when things are going well. Third and 11, Newcomb on a sprint out. Throwing, complete, and Wiggins trying to stretch to the chains. I don't know if he got there. I think he's getting a very favorable spot from the official running it in from the Nebraska sideline. I'm not sure he's the one marking the football, though. It's marked at his upfield foot. Instead of the back foot, the line judge marked it with his right foot, not his left. That's a positive sign for Nebraska. If he marked it with his back foot, the left foot, it would have been more trouble. But he marked it with his upfield foot, the right foot. They're going to measure, nevertheless, whichever foot they use. <laughs> Nebraska picks up the first down. They'll have 120 to go in the first half, and they'll be out at the 42-yard line. I think even if they're short, Nebraska may decide to go for it because if they're short, they are inches short. I think they may have gotten it, though. It's going to be close. Big first down there on Shevin Wiggins, 13th catch of the season. And they give Bobby Newcomb out of the shotgun, get him out of pocket. Nice job on the edge. Great block by Buckhalter to get Newcomb out unmolested on the perimeter. And as Buckhalter took his defender down to the ground, it ended up taking an interior lineman pursuing inside out down like a domino. Wiggins and Davison go to the top. Four wideouts in this set. Quick throw underneath and a catch for about five yards. Jackson made the play. Big Sheldon Jackson. And Piercy made a big hit. Jackson secured that football as Piercy was rattling his fillings. But the clock runs. Two timeouts left for Nebraska. And the same play for a first down. That'll stop it. Sheldon Jackson with 47 seconds to go. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Okay, thanks, Drew. Coming up at halftime, Dave's coaching tips takes us inside the Nebraska weight room. We'll also take a look back at some outstanding plays in the Big 12. And look ahead, some great matchups in the Big 12 set for later today. That's coming your way at half. Drew? All right, Knoxie, thanks. Here's a shuttle pass, Buckhalter, and he'll get to the 40-yard line. Now Nebraska will either have to burn a timeout or set up quickly. Looks like they're going to set up and spike it. And that shuttle pass is a good call because if it's not executed, it's not a fumble, it's just an incompletion. Well, now they call timeout, Dave, and they wasted probably six, seven seconds yep. trying to get lined up and then burned the timeout. And this was one of the keys for, for Missouri coming into this football game. They wanted to handle the two-minute drill better than they did at the end of the game last year when Scott Frost 
took Nebraska on that miraculous touchdown drive with very few seconds left on that clock. Missouri did not feel they handled the clock well in that situation defensively. And then, of course, lost in overtime. Let's take a look at the Big 12 standings in the north. Kansas State, number three in the country. They've yet to lose. Missouri, their only loss to number one, Ohio State. They led that game at halftime, as we talked about earlier. Colorado 3-1, and one. Nebraska trying to go to 3-1 and one in conference play. And in the south, Texas A&M unbeaten. They, of course, knocked off Nebraska a couple of weeks ago. Tech is 3-1, and one. and Texas is an improving team, Dave. They're a project in, in work right now, and they come to Lincoln next Saturday. And, and it's not going to be an easy task. The most balanced, or one of the most balanced offenses in the NCAA. They run the ball and throw the ball for over, well over 200 yards a game in each category. They're, they are very tough to defend. They're a smoothful. And Mac Brown's team has played better defensively of late. Second and four. They want to get at least a field goal out of this. The outcut to Wiggins in the pass a little too hot. And now with 23 seconds left, it's third and four. If you're looking at Chris Brown and where he can pop it through from in terms of distance. He is going to kick it into the wind. They probably need a few more yards than they ordinarily would. He's pretty good inside 52 or so. Dukum complete. Billy Hafke. Big play to the 25. Nice little comeback route run by Hafke, and Newcom put it right on the money, right between the eight and the zero. Excellent route, excellent delivery, and nice catch of the football. Gotta love it, the former ninth teamer when he walked on five years ago. Nebraska. And Nebraska calls a timeout. This is interesting because now they're out of timeouts. And the coaches are, are going crazy. The coaches are on the, on the field off the sideline saying, who called that timeout? We certainly didn't signal for that timeout. They want a clarification. And Hafke ran a great route, got the separation on the little comeback. He drove the defensive back down the field, ran the comeback pattern, and Newcomb was right on the money with the football. Frank Solich getting, a, in his mind, a satisfactory explanation. He and Ron Brown were 10 yards on the field when that timeout was signaled. You know, Chris Brown is now six for eight on the season. From 30 to 39 yards, he's 0 for 1. From 40 to 49, 2 for 3 coming in. What was the one that he hit today? Makes 38. Six for eight, 38. Yeah, so yeah, and he had one block from 38. That's, oh, that's right. He's 5 for 8, not 6 for 8. Oh, no, he's 5 for 9. See, he made one and he had one block. So he's 5 for six, six, 6 for, for nine. 9. Yeah, there we go. I'll get you the math. Jeez. Mrs. Riley would be really upset me. with you. She's killing me. 6 for 9 on the day, on the season. 1 for 2 on the day. And again, there's a bit of a wind blowing on the field. And if they don't get any more yards, they'd be looking at a 42-yarder. I'm going to get my calculator at the half to be able to figure out these field goals. I'll help you out with that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Newcomb out of the gun. Ends on shot all alone. And he threw it behind Davison on the double move. Davison by himself and Newcomb missed him by half an acre. Posey gambled. Posey bit on the first move. Boy, that was there big time. Out of the shotgun. Newcomb rolls to his left and sets up. His mechanics are fine. The ball just sails on him. And Davison was there. Davison knows that he's got the double move executed on Posey big time. 11 seconds to go. Newcomb he better get out of bounds or in the end zone, one or the other. He gets out of bounds with three seconds to go. And that was a heady play by the 19-year-old. And they'll bring in Chris Brown. Yeah, Newcomb figured that out of the shotgun, once he kept himself alive, he had an opportunity to look down the field and make a play. And he said, right now, I'm going to tuck it, get to the sideline, get all the yards I possibly can. Jones is closing on me. I'm going to get out of bounds. But it's a right hash mark shot for Chris Brown. He has to come back across his body on this one. 30 yards away. And Brown has it through. So Nebraska closes within a touchdown as time expires in the first half. Missouri has lost 19 in a row to the Big Red, but at halftime, they're up seven.
of Lincoln, Nebraska. The University of Nebraska, 76,425 wedged in. And right now, the home folks are concerned. Missouri leading 13 to 6. And down with head coach Larry Smith of Missouri is Jim Knox. Jim? Coach put off the upset at halftime. One of the... Okay, here we go. Ready? Okay. Coach pulling off the upset at halftime. What are you looking to do here in the second half? Any changes? Uh, we're just going to come out and play football. Run and hit, make plays. That's what it's all about. Uh, defense keep playing the way they are, keep our kicking game going, and it's time for the offense to take over. So we'll Thanks, be Coach. Honest. Best of luck in the second half. Drew? All right, Jim, thanks very much. Corby Jones getting ready. Let's take a look at the numbers brought to you by Sitco from the first 30 minutes. Dave? Well, this, uh, this turnover that, uh, that Nebraska had ended up being a touchdown. So that was a huge giveaway right there. And th that's basically the story in this football game. That's the differential in this football game. The one thing that we don't see here is the block field goal that set up another scoring opportunity for Missouri. So Nebraska with a giveaway for a touchdown and a block field goal that set up other points. And the other story in this football game is Nebraska still enjoys a 15-yard advantage starting point field position-wise and yet have not been able to take advantage of it. Missouri has weathered the storm of poor field position and still have a touchdown lead in this game. You know, the last time Nebraska trailed at halftime at Memorial Stadium seven years ago, 1991, late November against Oklahoma. This is a short kick. And it's going to go out of bounds. So Nebraska, if they want, can have it at the 35-yard line. J.R. Romine kicks it out of bounds, and the kicking woes continue for Missouri. To say that uh, it's been a tough go for kickers at Missouri this year would be like saying it's... Uh, Free kick, infraction, on a kicking team. Larry. High roll. The ball would be placed on the 35-yard line. Larry Smith trying to figure out exactly what was going through his kicker's head. And, and I, I don't think he's getting a legitimate answer either. Nah. Monte Cristo back in at quarterback. He played a couple of series in the first half. Had a costly turnover that led to a touchdown. Steve Erickson he puts it on the ground immediately. And he got it back right at the 35-yard line. Boy, Murphy's Law taking effect right away on the first snap for Nebraska. Center quarterback exchange. Heskew talking it over with Christo as they work their way back to the huddle. See if the snap, you know, you can't really tell if the snap was short or if Christo didn't ride the center long enough to complete the exchange, but it would be better than that. Delay to Buckhalter. And he gets a yard or two. The hole filled up nicely by Missouri. Counting off Easter, the strong safety came up and got involved. And that's when you have to think a little play-action pass. When you have a safety, that knows you right at the line of scrimmage. That box is being loaded up on you. You're going to have to maybe start to make that ball to the line of scrimmage, try to get those safeties and linebackers nosy coming downhill and sneak the ball behind them. Nebraska may have to start a little bit of thought process toward the play-action. Wiggins comes to the near side. Davis into the top on third and eight. Christo throwing. Batted up in the air. Intercepted and dropped. It was Easter who made the play on the football. The intended target was Jackson. And you dropped the football. Wade Perkins, who has five this year, which is second in the nation. Well, you talk about a hot potato. Newcomb rolls out of the pocket. He sets himself, doesn't have to throw back across his body because he completely sets, but he throws right into coverage. I mean, the ball, the Christo, I should say, the ball is, is, is right there. Easter deflects it. Perkins can't control it. We'll talk about a hot potato on the old tip drill, but what was Christo looking at? Why was he throwing that football in tight coverage? This is not a good effort by LaFleur. Potter on a hop thought about it, and it gets away from it. And Missouri will have it where it was touched, which is about the 21-yard line. A punt of 42. So it looks pretty good in the stats. A net punt of 42. Frank Solich's team has struggled to run the football today. 
One or throw. They've really not gotten any kind of offensive rhythm going at all. And I think you have to give Missouri a lot of credit for that. But there's been mis-execution offensively by Nebraska and great defensive play by Missouri. So it's a combination of both, and it always is. Corby Jones, the numbers in the first half. Not sparkling numbers, but his team leads 13 to 6. West behind Benton in the eye. Movement up front. Jones lost the football. No flags came in. Well, the big fella, Jason Wills, was rolling out of his stance, but he did not get in the neutral zone. So he was able to control his body and stay on side. But boy, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Both quarterbacks fumbling the exchange to start the second half on the first offensive play. has it away and he threw it way behind John Dowsman. Well he did because he got drilled by Kelsey. Foreman and Kelsey hit Corby Jones made him throw the ball way before he wanted to and to throw it inaccurately. So the rush was significant enough. Corby Jones a little play action rolls to the right then drops back behind his right tackle. Kelsey hits him. He can't transfer his weight totally in throws it to the middle of the football field inaccurately as a result of the pressure. Missouri needs the 32-yard line on third and 11. Jones under pressure, incomplete the flat to West, and they knocked him down again. Eric Johnson this time from the back side, the blind side. Walker, who's been in the end zone on a punt return and a kick return this year. First time a Nebraska player can say that since the great Johnny Rogers in 1971. He'll field Vince Sebo's punt. The Heisman Trophy winning Johnny Rogers. He was special. Real special. Oh, Sebo with a monster punt. Jeez. If Missouri can get there, they'll down it inside the one. No, nope. they could not. That is a punt of 80 yards. Well, the mistake that Posey made, if he could have just thrown the ball instead of trying to recover it, just hit it backwards, keeping the field of play to a teammate. Welcome back to our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox, Missouri leading 13 to 6. Nebraska thought they'd have better field position, but an 80-yard punt by Sebo. Jeez. Went in the end zone there at the 20. Still Monte Cristo, and the toss to Buckhalter. And he gets five, and our man on the move, Jim Knox. Jim, where are you? High above yeah. Memorial Stadium, guys. That's right. This is where the new 42 new press boxes, luxury press boxes, I may add, will be here at Memorial Stadium in time for next season. In fact, all new press boxes by next year. They will also have a brand new three-level press box. You guys will love that. New concession stands, new west side of the stadium. I'm just looking here, luxury suites, and I'm just about to put down a deposit right here on mine. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Well, Jim, you're paying you pretty well, evidently. Keep that hard hat on as Buckhalter goes <laughs> up the middle to about the 37-yard line. Jim looks good in a hard hat. That's what he really does. He really does. Buckhalter with a little bit of a counter step, a delay, and Piercy makes a touchdown saving tackle. I mean, if he doesn't get there, it's a it's a foot race. Does, does uh, Posey have the angle to catch Buckhalter? That's a Nice, nice little crease up the gut, though, by the Nebraska offensive line. Christo keeps it and falls at the 40-yard line, a pickup of just a couple. Eric Crouch, who at the start of the season was the backup, is available to play quarterback for Nebraska today as well. He had a bad hip pointer, but he's 
healthier than he's been, the freshman from Omaha. And there's Bobby Newcomb sitting out his second straight series. I wonder if that knee's really acting up on him. You know, if they, at, at the end of the half, you go in and you cool down and all that swelling, and you stiffen up, sometimes it's harder to get loose in the second half. Buckhalter. Got about three, and then he's driven backwards. Last year, Nebraska, along with Michigan, co-national champions. Look at what they averaged on the ground last year, and you know, most teams would take 270, but that's not like the Huskers, is it, Dave? No, absolutely. And this was a rushing title. At 392.6 yards per game, led the entire nation. As you can see, they're, they're well below their norm. And I think a big factor, four new offensive linemen, and some of those young guys' as inexperiences there are having to learn more than one position. Third down and four. Crystal with time. Complete to Davison to the 48-yard line. First catch of the day for the hero of last year's game, Matt Davison. Well, he got a flag on the field. A little activity going on with Jackson, the tight end, and mixing it up a little bit with a couple of Missouri players. One of them being Easter at the safety level and the other one being Gibson at the linebacker level. Let's see who the flag went against. Looks like it's going to be on Missouri for reaching out and grabbing Jackson a little too closely. Going to take the, the yards. Well, done. The completion gives you better field position. Now you're talking about the rushing title last year for Nebraska. Seven of the last ten years, they've been the top rushing team in college football. Absolutely. But it takes a while to coordinate things up front, doesn't Holding. it? Holding. On a defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, one thing that this Nebraska offensive line has done all year, according to Frank Solich, is pass protect pretty well. And this is another indication, another example of it. The pocket is formed nicely for Christo. The defensive ends are run by him. He's able to step up. Christo, back to Vickle, wide open. Now he spots him. Drop the football. Makovica was really open initially. Well, he was under throw. Wade Perkins was trying to get back there and get involved. And if, if Christo sees him earlier enough and lays it out there and lets Makovica run under it, it's a quick six. He was there, as you called it, Drew, right away. A little semi roll to the right, a throwback pass. Makovica comes all the way back across the football field, but you got to catch that football. And Makovica knows it, and Christo misses it. Op uh, knows it. Opportunity missed right there. Second and ten. Christo on the keeper. Flag comes in. Christo got nine. But they call holding on the perimeter with Lance Brown. He was locked up out there with Posey. Let's see what the call is. It's going against Missouri. I don't know. We got a personal foul maybe going on. Lined up offside. Lined up in the neutral zone. Lance Brown was locked up big time on the edge with Posey. Flag was thrown in that area. I thought maybe a little extracurricular going on, but no harm, no foul there. Offside. Defense. Penalties decline. First down. Nobody jumped. It was just pure alignment. You can't line up in the neutral zone, and if the helmet is in the neutral zone past the football, you're dead meat defensively. First and 10 at the 35 of Missouri. Nebraska on the move. Buckhalter. Well, that was vintage Nebraska. Offensive line moving people out. Buckhalter just cozied up behind them. Exactly, Drew. And what Nebraska tried to do on this was to outnumber Missouri on one side of the line of scrimmage by running the old counter. Once again, pulling the lineman from the backside, let Buckhalter cozy up behind him and then just push the pile. Outnumbered him and gave the big push at the point of attack. Few pancakes on that play. Second down and five. Makovica to the 20 yard line. I think he's a little angry. He doesn't think his knee was down, but referees feel otherwise. He feels he spun out of there without touching the ground with his knee, but I don't see how if he did that, he does have a this on his chest. <laughs> Makovica is a guy, there's no quit in him. 
Now, does, does his derriere hit? He's rolling on a pile of people. Does his body touch down anywhere? He may have a good point. That's that old Herschel Walker deal. Yeah, he never hit the ground. He was just rolling on bodies. First and 10 at the 20. Trailing by a touchdown, Buck Halter on the cutback to the 15. And this is the best offensive series of the game for Nebraska. It really is, and, the, and I think a, a positive sign for Nebraska on this, even though they missed a touchdown opportunity to Makovica, nobody has their chins on their chest, and they're staying after it, and they, they're, they're being resilient in this particular sequence. Already Buck Halter averaging six yards per rush here on this uh, particular drive. That's better math than what you had going in the first half. Really? Starting to cipher again. Yeah. This is Christo. And he'll be short of the first down by about three yards. Al Sterling grabbed him and dropped him. I changed batteries my calculator half time. Did you? That was low. That was a wise move. He was blinking. He was blinking on me. The screen was blinking. Big down right here. This is a difference maker in this football game. Third Billy and short. Yeah, Billy Hafke's bringing in the play. Third down and about two and a half for the Huskers. Buckhalter, he's going to lose a yard. Great open field tackle by Kaldronoff Easter. Oh, he talked about how both teams run the ball well inside between the tackles. The team that executed and defended the option best on the perimeter will probably win this game. And this time it's defended exceptionally well. Christo is accounted for, as is Buckhalter by Easter. That is just a picture-perfect defensive play against the option right there. Chris Brown, 30 yards away from the far hash mark. And he missed it. Pushed it right. Chris Brown, one of the better kickers in the United States, misses from 30 yards. And after a long drive, Nebraska gets nothing on the scoreboard. Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska's 46-game home winning streak on the line. 6.43 to go in the third. Ricky Huntley talking to the Missouri defense. They've done a marvelous job today. There's Ricky. And there's Easter, who made the big hit on that third down that led to the missed field goal. From the 20-yard line, Missouri hands off to Devin West. Not much doing. And Nebraska's defense has played exceedingly well today also. They've given up less than 100 yards in total offense. And Charlie McBride has had great success here as a defensive coordinator for Nebraska. They get it done year after year. I mean, they've, they've finished in the top 10 in four major, major categories in the same season three times under that guy. And Charlie's been here for 120 years. <laughs> Great football coach. Corby Jones to run the option. Cut it back. And he got about six or seven. That's the Corby Jones we saw last year. Tough to bring down with arm tackles. Absolutely. And, and boy, he got once he planted, you gotta you gotta feel that his toes is a lot better. Because what he can do now, he they weren't running the option with him at Oklahoma. They didn't want to get him hit. But he, he redirects himself, reroutes himself, and gets up the football field and makes some people miss. Then Kaiser finalizes, but that's more vintage Corby Jones right there. Plant and get upfield. Third and two. Missouri has been awesome in this situation this year. So now, the shot by Nebraska's Brian Shaw. Again, Missouri making a, a point of getting Corby Jones out of pocket half the time that he throws the football. 50% of the time he's in pocket, shotgun or otherwise. The remainder, he's on the perimeter. And that time it was defended well by Nebraska. Ryan Shaw with a great hustle play. Debo, his last one was 80. The best he can do here, Dave, is 78. <laughs> Shevin Wiggins. Got room. <laughs> to the 13-yard line, special. 
special teams, the return game, setting up Nebraska. And, and the guy that should take a major league bow to all this applause, Wiggins, but then his compatriot, his cohort, Walker. Sebo with an inconsistent drop. He drills him, and then sometimes he shanks him. Watch the block right here. That's what gets it started. Joe Walker, when he didn't feel the punt, blocked for his compatriot, Wiggins. Bristow, spun around, keeps going. Barry Odom and a bunch of white jerseys finally grabbed him. Going back to the top of the game, Dave, one of the big differences between Nebraska and Missouri, and Larry Smith was well aware of this, was special teams in the return game of Nebraska. And Missouri started every practice with the kicking game. That was their first point of emphasis. They made personnel changes, putting defensive starters back on their coverage teams to match up better than Nebraska. Let's see if Nebraska can finally take advantage of good field position. And the flag was dropped by the referee. We have a substitution infraction against the offense. They broke the huddle with 12 players. Well, that's a no-no. Steve Juszczyk, our referee, indicating that. And that'll cost Frank Solich's team five yards. Illegal substitution. Basically, that, that was outlawed because you, defensively, it's impossible to match up. You don't know which guy is going to leave the football field if it's a wide receiver, tight end, or back, and it affects your defensive matchup. Ace formation, Buckhalter gets the call. And he runs into Jamonte Robinson, a 210-pound freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida, Michigan leading. Ohio State leading in Evanston, Illinois. Tulane, how about the green wave, Dave? The other bout doing the job. Yeah, the other bout is out of a job. Yeah, the other bout said no more from Auburn. Colorado State in the first over Texas Christian. Kansas State leading in Manhattan. We'll see Kansas State next week against their arch rivals, the University of Kansas and Lawrence on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week. That pass caught. Gorgeous catch by Davison. He's used to catching those that are scraping the ground. Really, who else? Davison must get his, he gets his hands down underneath the football as well as anybody in the game. This guy, if he wasn't a shortstop, he should have been. Runs a little pivot route to the sideline, gets his hands underneath the football and makes a play on the football. It's thrown low and outside intentionally, so Posey can't make a play on it, but not that low. Boy, that's a great, great effort by Davison. And look what he did against a &M. He now has a catch in 11 straight games. Quarterback sneak on fourth down. Big surge by the Huskers up front. He needed a foot. Monte Cristo got more than that. So the Huskers will have first and goal, trying to tie up the football game with 2.19 to go in a rapidly moving third quarter. And it's been Monte Cristo, Dave, the last three series. You wonder if that knee has truly tightened up on Bobby Newcomb. Yeah, Bobby was, uh, he was a wounded warrior out there, I thought, in the first half, big time. Buckhalter. Good short tackle by Julian Jones. You know, sometimes you can make a defensive, you can make an intelligent defensive guess as to where a football is going. Look at the split, the huge split between the right guard and right tackle. That's on the goal line. That's a significant split. And you're trying to spread the defense out. That's exactly where the football goes. A nice def defensive effort by Julian Jones. Second and goal inside the three. Christo, touchdown! Decision made by Christo. He's an excellent decision maker in the option. He pitches at the last possible second. He's got great pitch technique. And this time, it ends up with a touchdown for the Cornhusker. A little hesitation opens some room, and Monte Christo makes it 13 12. Chris Brown, who hasn't missed in a couple of years, to tie it up. And he pokes it through. We're all even, 13-13, with 1.32 to go in the third. The count of Monte Cristo. 
second straight year. Monte Cristo has been getting it done at quarterback. The difference in this game, a missed extra point by Brian Long of Missouri. A missed extra point by Long and Chris Brown, two for four. One field goal blocked and one missed. He was 18 for 21, only missed three all of last year. They got a reverse set up. Ooh! <laughs> Carlos Posey to the 24-yard line. Well, it was fun to watch, but it didn't result in the big play Missouri was looking for. Posey, the fastest of the Missouri Tigers. Steve Colbert, the linebacker from Missouri, tried to come back and get a peel back, but Missouri, uh, Nebraska saw him coming. Let's see if the exchange is made. Here comes the hit right here, and he gets hit. But oh, Colbert gets knocked backwards. Now, he wasn't fooled. Colbert thought he had a, a, an ear hole shot, a blindside shot, but he got kaput. He got his eyes straight in the nick of time. First and 10, 24-yard line. Devin West straight ahead. And Devin West gets about eight. Sweeney, the corner. Mike Brown, the rover, brought him down. Even though his name is West, that's one direction he doesn't go. He likes to go north. He does not want to turn his shoulder pads to the sideline. He wants to turn his shoulder pads and square them up to the line of scrimmage and run people over like he did Sweeney. And Sweeney remains on the turf. 58 seconds to go in the third quarter. There have been some near misses for Nebraska today. Absolutely. On this occasion, Bobby Newcomb overthrows Davison. Davison with a double move is wide open. He overthrows him. Macavica. Normally sure-handed misses an easy touchdown pass. And Chris Brown, he has not miss before he puts that one right. He's two for four today. That miss and another one blocked. So the kicking game has come up to bite Nebraska in the butt as equally as effectively as it has to Missouri. Sweeney goes to the sideline. Keo Braver, a freshman from Texas, comes in on second and two. Devin West will have the first down across the 35 to the 36-yard line. You know, Devin West and Corby Jones are best friends. They're roommates, and you know, Corby Jones, with the death of his dad, assistant coach Curtis, well-documented this summer, died of a heart attack. Popular, popular guy around campus and with his players, and he's leaned a lot on Devin West this fall. It's almost like a second brother for Corby Jones is Devin West, even more so than a roommate. Corby Jones is grieving, and rightfully so. It's been a tough year for him physically and mentally. He gives to his buddy, and Devin West with about five yards. And to honor Curtis Jones, the longtime assistant coach and former very good player at Missouri, you see the CJ on the top of the Missouri football helmets. They've got a little tribute set up to Coach Jones in the locker room that all the players touch as they leave the locker room for the home games in Columbia. He had a major impact on the young people, young players' lives on and off, more importantly, the football field. Three quarters done. Three chapters closed at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox, 13 apiece. Missouri has not knocked off Nebraska since James Wilder was the tailback and Phil Bradley the quarterback 1978 it happened on this field second and five for Missouri from their own 41 Devin West wrestled to the ground Jason Wilkes and we check in with Jim Knox who is sans the hard hat I believe <laughs> yes I have Drew Bobby Newcomb has spent a good part of the second half on the sidelines we'll work from the benches Bobby Newcomb is okay Monte Cristo is just moving the team well so right now Bobby Newcomb will say on the sidelines there you go with the hot guy yeah they like the way the count is operating and moving this football team third down and one for Missouri Rucker. Oh, they tried to down block, angle block Mike Rucker, and it was a poor approach. Mike Rucker got penetration, and Devin West does not get thrown for loss very often. In fact, only three times in his last 200 carries, but that time, because of the penetration, the down block not executed by the tight end, Blakely, 
And it's all over with. Boom, in the backfield. No chance for West. Shevin Wiggins back deep. Vince Sebo will kick it into a mild breeze. Last two times, Missouri's had third and less than two. They have not converted. Coming in, they have been 23 of 24 in that situation. Nice. Sebo shanks it. That's my, that's my nine iron right there. Well, that was the converse of what he did two punts ago when he booted it 80 yards. That one goes six. Boy, I'll tell you, you talk about inconsistency. In, in my opinion, whenever a punter suffers through inconsistency, it's the drop from his hand to his foot. He doesn't have the same drop two times in a row. And now once again, Nebraska, let's take a look at the drop. Off the outside of the foot, the drop not consistent. Shank City, he knew it right away as soon as he contacted the football. Now Nebraska once again with a short field to negotiate at the 49. The plus 49, Buckhalter running over people, gets to the 43. And this game, not reminiscent necessarily of the Ohio State game for Missouri, but one thing that did happen against the Buckeyes is they wore down late in the game, and Nebraska started to get things done up front. Well, Nebraska, after three quarters, had run 60 snaps to Missouri's 37. Missouri's defensive football team has been on the field way too much. Let's see if it becomes a factor. Same play, Buckhalter. Will be about a yard shy of a first down. Tackled by the free safety, Harold Piercy. Let's take a look at Rayola right here. The big fella up in the offensive line. Will pull from the left guard position and get the trap block that gets the thing started. A little kick out blocking. Up the football field you go. Angle blocking is, is important in this game because both defensive fronts are strong. And it is a first down. Christo will move the chains. Nebraska over the last four and a half years, an amazing 66 and four. Actually, over the last five and a half years, 66 and four. That's an NCAA record. And if you think about that, it's almost unfathomable. It really is. It, it, it really is. I mean, five straight 11 win seasons. This team's numbers go on and on and on. It is just one heck of a machine. Christo wants to throw it. And on the back side, he's got Buckhall there, he missed him. And Buckhalter gave a shot, and here comes the flag. Yep. Closing was Marquis Gibson. And that's who's going to be called, I think. He knew the play was incomplete and, and ended up staying after it and making a hit. And Larry Smith can't believe it, reading his lips. He said, they called that? And there's a discussion going on right now. Was the hit by Gibson illegal? Looks like that's a good Personal foul on a defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. Now you have a situation. The official thought that Gibson came with a with the illegal elbow. I thought maybe that they were calling that it was too late. All the play go action goes to the right side of the field. It's a throwback to his check down man late to the left. It's obvious that it's incomplete. Takes about five steps and hits him in the chops. I mean, snapped his head. So the, the, the elbow, the, the late elbow is what was called. Moves the ball to the 23-yard line. Makovica drags Danny McKinney for a couple of yards. Now here's where Missouri can't unravel. The six-yard the six punt is equivalent to turnover. I mean, because of the horrible field position that it left Missouri's defense in, but you can't self-destruct with silly penalties to compound the problem. Buckhalter. He'll have a first down inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first at goal, Nebraska. Buckhalter's saying, you know that old saying, the buck stops here? He's saying the buck halts here. Buckhalter's doing a good job. McAvick gets the chop block. And Buck Halter takes it up the football field, takes the collision, a, a violent hit by Sterling right there. But Buck Halter gets all that he can. Very upright runner, though. Should get a little bit more of a lean going, I think. He slashes it hard, though. And a rather inconspicuous 108 yards now for Buck Halter. Christo keep it. Three tackles to the three-yard line. 
Well, it's not just the linemen are, that are starting to wear on Missouri. It's the backs and the quarterback. Christo has got inherent pinball tendencies, it seems like here. Looks like he's a pinball in an arcade. Starts bouncing off contact. He just he gets hit from both sides, and it ends up making him go straight ahead again. This guy gets hit from both sides of his body and just keeps rerouting himself due to the contact. And he is a typical Nebraska football player, a former walk-on. He's had four surgeries, two on his thumb, a knee, and a back, and here he is in his senior year trying to bring Nebraska from behind against Missouri. Oh, touchdown, Monte Cristo. Once he knew he was near that goal line, there was no stop in the count. The count was on his mount. 49-yard drive, Nebraska looking to make it a seven-point differential. Chris Brown makes it 20 to 13 with 10-27 to go in the fourth quarter. Nebraska back on top in Lincoln. Out of Monte Cristo. Nebraska trailed 13 to 6 at halftime, and they now lead 20 to 13. Two short touchdown runs by that man, the senior who truly has waited his turn here in Lincoln. Well, patience is a virtue. Monte Cristo is virtuous at this point. He has been extremely patient. Injury has been a factor in his career, but enjoying it now. Chris Brown kicks it to Jones. And Jones gets lit up at the 19-yard line. Brian Shaw down on special teams. Watch the block by Tracy Wistrom right here, the tight end, sustaining contact. Stay with your block, and as a result of that effort, the count, Monte Cristo is able to get up the field. Now, this is Grant Wistrom's younger brother, the tight end, Tracy Wistrom, on the other side of the line of scrimmage, performing on the perimeter for Nebraska. That's pretty good sustaining contact. Look at the difference in possession time. Missouri, as you've talked about, their defense has been on the field the entire second half. Just one Missouri first down after intermission. Jones gets it away. This will be a loss. Devon Black out of the backfield. Knocked down by Ralph Brown. Man, it was Brown hitting Black, and both are black and blue. Man, I'll tell you, that's a shot. Drops off his coverage. He's, re he's in a zone defense. He's got the underneath coverage. Reads Corby's eyes, sees the football delivered, and then detonates. He had dynamite caps in his helmet on that one and lit him up. Well, he's not a big guy either. 5'9", 180. Charlie McBride likes what he sees. Second and 10. Here's West. West gets within three of the first down, and let's revisit the keys to victory for Missouri. Let's see how Missouri did. Positive kicking game. Well, they blocked the field goal. That was that was excellent. They missed a, a punt, though, a, an extra point, and it had bad punts, a deflected punt and a shank punt. That's about that's about an even. I'd give that a check. Play with poison patience here lately in the second half. That's a minus. Option execution. That's been a problem for them. I, you know, their keys are not that far off. That's why they're still in this football game by only a touchdown in the, on the short end. They desperately need a first down here. Jones had it blocked at the line of scrimmage. It was tipped. Mike Rucker, six foot six, got a big mid on it. Well, he had the play on third down where he defeated the tight end's block and blew up West in the backfield. And then on the next third down, he knocks the ball down, gets the big mucker up. Rucker with the mucker. They can't chop him down. He goes airborne just like a volleyball player spiking, spiking the ball to the turf. Big ruck with the big mitt. Then Sebo to kick it. His last punt went six yards. This one's a line drive. 
And Walker has to get away from it. It's going to turn out pretty good for the Tigers. You know, Drew, when you let the ball hit the carpet and you don't field it on the, in the fly, it's going to cost you a minimum on an average basis, 16 yards of field position. That one was even more. You never knew that. We got all kinds of facts. We'll yeah. back in a moment. Very 13. The man in the circle there is Mike Rucker. He is from St. Joseph, Missouri. Right now, he's hurting his home state team. He's made a couple of huge plays defensively. Big third down plays, back-to-back -back series. One against the run, one against the pass. Huge efforts. And the Tigers have just one first down in the second half. Buckhalter. Gets about four yards to the 14. Let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper Big 12 leaders scoring. Kansas State putting up a boatload of points. Then Texas will be in here next week. Then Nebraska and Missouri. 37 for Nebraska. Last year they averaged 47 a game. It's a testament to how tough both defensive football teams have been here today with the score of 2013 with about half of the, half of the fourth quarter remaining is it. Chris to on the option, and he breaks a tackle, and another, and a third. Finally dropped at the 32-yard line by Justin Smith. Marquis Gibson had a great shot at him for a loss, and he broke the tackle, and then a couple more. Boy, Christo's got some wiggle to him now. Does a good job on the perimeter. Boy, Gibson did have him right to another missed tackle. Third missed tackle. I'll tell you what, Robinson had a shot at him. Pierce had a shot at him. Gibson had a shot at him. But a little wiggle in his walk is the count right now. Confidence growing with every snap. Two tight ends. Give it to the fullback. Let Macavica borrow for four yards. Steve Erickson will be the last one up for Missouri. Joel Macavica played eight man football in Brainerd, Nebraska. Like his brother. Came here and started Nebraska. In fact, Billy Legate, third team fullback, also played eight man football growing up. You gotta love the uh, Makovica family if you're a Nebraska alum, I'll tell you that. Buck Walter, that's a good shot. And it was 96, Justin Smith. Stop to the point. taking a knee in the helmet. Yeah, he, he, he got dazed right there. He's a little wobbly as he gets up. That, that, that knocks you silly when you take a knee right on the head like that. Let's see the keys to victory for Nebraska. Huge plus there. Field position has been extraordinary for them. Big play battle. Last year, Missouri had uh, 12 plays of over 15 yards. Big plus there. Hasn't happened. Turnovers, even Steven. But the two big pluses in terms of no big play and field position are the reason they're up seven. Third and five. Cristo on a roll, and he throws it away. And that was a smart play. Instead of losing 10 yards, and having to punt from back inside your own 20. Yeah, that play, there was nowhere to go with the football. The danger is when you roll out, you, you only got one third of the football field to throw to. Everything to the left is, is, is no factor. Christo, as he, as he rolls to his right, gets blown up. <laughs> yeah, that that, that's, a little, that's a little painful hit right there by Mangucci. You know what? He got gooched he did. by Pat Mangucci. Sounds, is that a pasta? Gucci with a little yeah, tomato sauce? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, look at this shot. This is a gorgeous punt by LaFleur. And Potter does the right thing. He lets it go over his head. And it'll come out to the 20. A punt of 64 yards. We see three punts today above 60 yards. That win. Losses to Nebraska don't happen often in their house. Just twice in the last 11 years. We documented it earlier. The two teams to come in here and win won national championships. Colorado and in 91, the University of Washington. Nebraska leads 20 to 13. Missouri, first and 10 at their own 20. They've done next to nothing on offense in the second half. 6.08 to play. Jones on first down, and that's well overthrown. Double coverage. They had Dowsman bracketed. Missouri had the halftime lead, but take a look at what's happened here in the second half. Four punts, two of them, one, two, three, and out. Offensive coordinator hates that sound, the old cha-cha, one, two, three, punt. Can't stand the sound of that. The most plays they've run from scrimmage any series is six. 
Going to have more than that. 32 yards in offense after intermission. Second and 10. Jones, good strike. Complete to Kareem Wise across midfield to the 48 of Nebraska. Just the fifth catch on the season for the junior transfer from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Well, Kareem Wise has been inconsistent with the catch. He's had opportunities, but this one, Corby just rifled in there accurately with velocity. Nice throw of the football. Right there, Wise makes a great play on a little crossing pattern. And yards after catch significant as well. He's a big target at 6'3 and 216. Option look, pitch to West. And Devin maybe got a yard. Boy, Nebraska pursues in a hurry. Jay Foreman, Mike Brown. Looked like he might have the corner for a second. I agree with you, Drew. Sean Benton had got a better block on the edge as a fullback. West may have gone for significant yards, but marginal effort on the perimeter by Benton. It looked like he was confused as to which guy to take, so he didn't take either. Take one and do it aggressively. Devin West came in averaging over 170 a game. There's a football field short of that now. Second and nine. And West gets about five. He collided with Corby Jones on the handoff. Jay Foreman brought him down. Big third down coming here. Third and four. And with 4.48 and the clock moving, Dave, is this four down territory for Larry Smith? I think it definitely is, particularly with his kicking woes. He's got nobody that he can trust to get anything done. And I don't think he cough and corner, Nebraska. You're, you are only one score down, but right now, you want to take all the time off the clock you can, score to tie it up, or go for two to win it, and give Nebraska no time to come back. going to be a loss. Devin West did well to hang on to the pitch. And instead of fourth and short, it's going to be fourth and 10 yards to go. Kaiser was the disruptor. He made quick penetration, made Corby Jones pitch this ball before he really wanted to. That's a very catchable football. West did catch it, but on the second opportunity, he didn't catch it cleanly. This one's too much to risk. They are going to have to try to cough and corner Nebraska now and hope their defense can rise to the occasion. One, two, three, and out. That defensive football team is fatigued, though, Drew. They've been on the football field the whole second half. When they watch tapes of this game tomorrow, the offense is real. They'll be done in 20 minutes. The defense will be in there three hours. The way it is right now, you're right. They need a hey! angle punt from Sebo. Wiggins trying to get to the wall. Okay. Big kickoff block. You can see that one coming a mile away. A tremendous hit. And Artie Johnson, a wide receiver, is going to make sure that the, all the grommets on his helmet still are in working condition. No doubt. The hit that was uh, was delivered was was by Brown. Al Brown made the made the made the shot. And here's the contact, and it's a uh, it's a definite. Might have been McCamey. Was it was it the big defensive end McCamey? Uh, somebody got drilled over there. They're checking their feelings. Oh, the team dentist is busy. Here's the option, and Monte Cristo dropped right around the line of scrimmage which is the 24-yard line. And Jeff Marriott, who has a blocked field goal attempt today, made the tackle. 3.03, block moving, full complement of timeouts for Missouri. Also for Nebraska. Missouri wants to save their TOs for offense. Cristo will work the 25-second play clock. Buck a big opening. First down and a 40. Large play there. Nothing fancy here. Just hit it. Follow your fullback, Makovica. Didn't really get much of a contact there. The key block, though, was Gesper. He took his defensive lineman to the turf. He got one of the vaunted pancake blocks. And when Nebraska's on a roll, they get 75 snaps in a game. 
they'll get 100 pancakes out there. The syrup flows freely out of their wideouts, linemen, and backs, knocking people to the turf. Buckhalter for a couple. The significance of the prior run, though, is that you get a fresh set of four downs and the clock continues to run. Steve Erickson, he of touchdown fame, hurt as he, he went to the sideline, takes his helmet off and, and takes a knee. He's on his hands and knees on the sideline. He's either got a shoulder problem, Big Erickson, or some kind of an elbow problem. 127 yards for Carell Buckhalter. He had 133 last week in the 41 nothing pasting of the Kansas uh -oh. ball still loose. Oh man, Missouri has it. Al Sterling, the wow. last thing wow. that Nebraska could have happen. And the count can't believe it. On his backside, another center quarterback exchange problem. It happened the first play of the half. They didn't lose possession of the football. This time, the center quarterback exchange problem is costly as it bounces out of the scrum pile and Sterling jumps on it. Amazing. That time it looked like the count may have pulled out a little bit too soon. Here's the deal. 1.38 to go. Three timeouts for Missouri. They need a touchdown. They must go 45 and a half yards to be exact. Jones throws it in the flat. And out of bounds is Devon Black after about six yards. Nice safe play, and it only took a couple of seconds. You know, to be honest with you, Drew, the crowd noise isn't what I anticipated. It has been no problem for Missouri to hear the snap count to function at the line of scrimmage. They've got a silent count that they're going to operate with if need be. But I thought the crowd might be a little bit louder and, and deafening. Missouri's having no problem operating offensively at all. Second and four. West runs into Jay Foreman. Well, his father, Chuck, may have been a great running back, but he's got to be proud of his son. He's a linebacker that doesn't take a drop step when he makes a tackle. That's right. He's a downhill player. He attacks that line of scrimmage. The other thing that he does so well, he gets everybody lined up properly. Timeout, third and two. We come. Corby Jones and Monte Cristo, third and two from the plus 37-yard line for Missouri, trailing by a touchdown, 124 to play. You saw the count on the right-hand side of the screen describing what happened with the snap. He was showing that it, it glanced off his hand. It hit to the side of his hand and just ricocheted off to his left. He did not get a clean exchange with the center, Hescu. They're talking about it once again. Boy, they're counting the seconds on the clock. They're just hoping that it melts big time. West behind Benton in the eye. Devin West, he didn't get there. He's a yard and a half short. It's Mike Rucker, the big playmaker again. Ruck is a truck today. Man, nobody can block that 18-wheeler. The thing is, he's got quickness. He's not only got size, he's penetrating. He's disruptive. He's the guy that stopped Nathan Simmons on the goal line against Oklahoma State. And on two consecutive defensive series, he made a great play. That tight end couldn't handle him on a down block on a third down. Then he deflected a ball on third down in the next series. Jones on the option, first down. Boy, gutsy call, and stopping right in his tracks was Corby Jones just lunging forward to get the first. In 41 seconds to go. Eric Anderson came out of there with the ball, but to no avail. Eric Johnson, I should say, no fumble. The executive producers are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson of this broadcast. The coordinating producer for College Football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Today's game has been produced by Bob Steinfeld, directed by Ken Miller, and our vice president of field operations, Andrea Jenkins. Ball at the 34. Clock running. Jones runs the fade. Wise jump ball. Couldn't come down with it. 
where Sweeney and Wise were in hand-to-hand -hand combat. As long as both players are turned, with their heads turned, making, trying to make a play on the football, they feel there's no harm done. I guess you could have called offensive interference as easily as defensive there as they were jockeying for position. But Sweeney didn't get his head turned to find the football soon enough in the official's position. A lot of contact there, but they felt it was incidental, and they didn't want that play to be a determining factor in this game since both players were knocking each other around. Charlie McBride told us yesterday they worked all week on the fade route. 28 seconds to go. Forget that it's second and 10. Missouri calls a timeout. They must get in the end zone, trailing 20 to 13. Passing has not been their forte in 98. We're down 13 to 6 at halftime. Second and 10 at the 34-yard line of Nebraska for Missouri, but just 28 seconds remaining. Dave, what do you do? Well, you got to throw the football. In. You don't necessarily, at this point in time, have to get the ball in the end zone. You're going to get the football to the sideline if possible. I, I'm sure Nebraska's going to try to funnel everything back inside, and if that's the case, get up and spike it. One timeout left for Missouri. Jones into double coverage and intercepted. It was intercepted. The official's saying it hit the ground incomplete. He's waving it off. Eric Johnson thought he had it. He still thinks he has it. It was a reversal of roles. Lehman had to turn around and play defensive back because Johnson did have his hands on the football. The official felt, though, that it did hit the ground. Lehman in the double coverage. Lehman ends up stripping the ball out of there. And the ball does come, the ball does pop up out of there. Yeah, it hit the ground, definitely. Good call by the official, no question. Nebraska's seen that play too many times where it hits a leg and pops up into Matt Davison's hand. Yeah. They love it every time that happens. Third down, flag comes in. Dawsman out there had half a step on Sweeney. Boy, we'll see what the flag's all about. Did Nebraska line up offside? They got a legal, form, a, a legal motion, an initial signal on Nebraska. One official came in from the sideline saying a legal uh, procedure. Boy, they only have six men on the line of scrimmage. I didn't see anybody jumping. You have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage for it to be a formation that's acceptable. Maybe they didn't have enough receivers up on the line of scrimmage for that seventh man. If you're Nebraska, you probably decline it. It'll be fourth and ten. They don't want to give them two shots. Not enough line on the line of scrimmage. Decline, fourth down. That's exactly what happened. The wideouts not up on the line of scrimmage far enough. Only had six men on the line of scrimmage. That's a no-go, and it's declined because it burns up a down, plus that play burned up time. Only 15 seconds on the clock. Missouri must get 10 yards here. If Missouri threw the ball today like they did last year against Nebraska, it would have been a horse of a different color. The throw complete, first down at the 21-yard line. Missouri lives for at least another snap, perhaps two, with nine seconds to go. And that's what I thought. Try to run the ball to the sideline, a little comeback route. I thought Nebraska might funnel it inside, though, not allowing you to step out of bounds to stop the clock and at least come up and spike it, burning up a down and clock. At that time, they were able to run the route to the sideline to live for another a breath of air here. Dawsman with the catch. Now you have to take two shots at the end zone, don't you? Oh, absolutely. At this point in time, you can't you can't come up short. The clock will stop only momentarily if you generate a first down. You're going to start going for the goal line. From the 22, nine seconds left. Blitz coming. Fade to Dawsman. He's out there. A lot of contact. No flag. Four seconds left. Sweeney was the cover corner. You know, a lot of people talk about the corner for the Huskers, Ralph Brown, and deservedly so, but Sweeney stacks up there pretty darn well himself. Great protection for Corby Jones. The protection's been there all day. The Missouri offensive line, very effective. Sweeney makes a swipe at the ball at an appropriate time, incomplete. And Missouri will call their final timeout. 
Larry Smith has one more snap. He needs to get it in the end zone, trailing by seven. You know, this uh, Nebraska defensive football team has come a long way since Louisiana Tech put 590 yards up on it, throwing the football in the opener. Since then, the opposition's only completing less than 43% of their passes and less than 150 yards a game. Yeah, Troy Edwards had about 400 catches by himself in that game. It, it was incredible. Rattay at quarterback and Edwards catching the football. That one-two combination had a season in a game against Nebraska, but their pass defense since that opener has been exceptional. I mean, real strong, and it's now it's going to have to step up for him in this important sequence right here. And you mentioned it uh, a few moments ago. Last year when Nebraska was on the ropes against Missouri in Columbia, Missouri put 233 yards up in the air and three touchdown passes from Corby Jones. They have been shut down in the air today. Well, the, for Missouri, the defense is on an upswing. The offense on the downswing a little bit in comparison to last year because they're not able to balance themselves like they did down the stretch throwing the football successfully. Here we go. In all probability, the final snap. Missouri needs six. Oh, he's going to get knocked down. He never got it launched. Nebraska holds on 20 to 13. Eric Johnson with the pressure and the hit. Corby couldn't even get the ball out of his hand for a jump ball situation, trying to let his, somebody on the other end of it make a play. It surprised me that he didn't throw the football anyway and hope and pray. But Johnson lit him up as, as the clock expired. Tremendous football game. Nebraska wins it with defense. Corby had to scramble out of the pocket to keep himself alive to make a play in the shotgun. Protection's okay. He sees the blitz on, a, on his right side, runs away from it. Nowhere to throw the ball, nowhere to throw the ball. What a hustle play by Johnson, because he was cut to the turf, got up off, his, off the ground, and made the hit on Corby Jones. Great effort. One of the stars of the game, Monte Cristo, and he's down on the field with Jim Knox. Jim? All right, thanks, Drew. Monte, I think you gave this team a huge lift in the second half. A couple of touchdowns. You came out and led this team to victory today. Yeah, we just talked about some things at halftime. We just didn't have any heart and any emotion, and I just tried to came out and, and fire the guys up a little bit and, and just try and get this offense moving a little bit. What was it like at halftime? You guys went in trailing Missouri by seven, coming out in the second half. Well, we all knew what was the problem. We just weren't executing. We, didn't, we weren't executing. We didn't have any fire, any emotion, and, uh, you know, Joel Makovic got into everybody a little bit, and I think it inspired some people, and we just came out and we were a totally different team in the second half. In the second half, when you went into the huddle, it seemed like it really lifted this team also in a way. Well, I hope so. You know, I'm a senior, and I just try to try to provide any kind of leadership, whether it's the way I play or, or what I say to these guys, and, and hopefully some of them responded well today. All right, congratulations All right. on the big victory, Monty. Yeah. Drew? All right, Jim, thanks very much. Great day for Monty Cristo off the bench, Dave, running the option. Good decisions. Little double clutch there, faking the pitch and turning it up for a touchdown on his own. Once again here, seeing Priest going airborne. Nice block by Wistrom at tight end, sustaining the play. And he is our Dr. Pepper player of the game. 67 yards, a couple of scores on the ground. Nebraska comes from behind and holds off Missouri. Their 20th straight win over the Tigers. We're back to Lincoln in a moment. Nebraska, though, they had some tenuous moments. They were down 13 to 6 at halftime. First time since 1991 they trailed at home at the break. And Dave. That offensive line got things rolling in the second half. Well, they really did, Drew, but this football game boiled down to the things that we thought it would. Turnovers, field position, and kicking game, or lack thereof. And ultimately, both teams suffered in, in all areas, although Nebraska gained for the entire game from start to finish, enjoyed a field position advantage, and I think that nullified the turnovers and the kicking game problems that both teams suffered somewhat. But field position huge in this one, as well as kicking game miscues. Another tough game for both of these schools coming up next week as we look at our Sitco game numbers. And Nebraska got it rolling on the ground, 256 yards. It didn't start out that way. It sure didn't. In total yards, Nebraska with a huge edge. In terms of snaps from the line of scrimmage, number of plays, I'm sure Nebraska was very, very much in the plus category that area as well. And Missouri flat out tired out as the game wore on in the final quarter. There were some marvelous plays today. Our BMW play of the game came 
on an option look from Monte Cristo. This may have been the one bad play he made all day. Exactly. This pitch a little bit behind. Mark Halford can't make a play on it, although he really could have, maybe should have. Johnny on the spot. Mr. Erickson, and he's off to the races. He saw golden goalposts immediately. Here's an updated look at the North standings. Nebraska now 3-1 and one with Colorado. They will play Kansas State in two weeks in Manhattan on the 14th of November. They have Texas at home next week. Missouri travels to Texas Tech. Plan to join us next Saturday morning at 11.30 for our next Big 12 football game as the nation's third-ranked team, the Kansas State Wildcats, will meet the Kansas Jayhawks in Lawrence. Now for Jim Knox and my partner Dave Lapham, I'm Drew Goodman saying so long from Lincoln, Nebraska, the Huskers 20-13 over the Tigers.